I don't think that's going to be a problem in this unit. The filter medium that I'm using is a, an, a cut to fit air conditioner filter that I found at several large national chain stores. Um, relatively inexpensive. I cut a template that would fit a couple inches off the bottom because I want this suspended off the bottom. I don't want this in the liquid. I would rather have it suspended above. And I like this material because it's boar's hair, it's biodegradable, and it also has a mesh on the outside which will help. It doesn't keep the larva out. They will crawl into the filter medium and that's okay. It helps hold the, the uh, material together because what will happen in a material with a material like this, uh, you might have learned this if you ever tried using the coconut fiber or coconut coir as a filter, the larva will get in there and expand this and eventually would mix it if it weren't for the stitching and the mesh, I hope, they would mix it into the compost and then it just becomes ineffective as a filter. So I've taken two pieces of this material and just loosely stitched them together using a yarn needle and some twine. I don't want to, I didn't want to compress the the uh, two pieces, but I just want to make it so that if the larvae get in there, they can't expand it. I also put a little loop in the center here and tied it off so that they can't expand it there. And then between that, the fiber, uh, the fact that the, or the mesh rather, and the fact that the fibers have been kind of glued together with some type, they're called rubberized, so I don't know if that means they're held together with latex or whatever, but the, the point is this needs to uh, stay intact to remain functional. Now I mentioned keeping it off the bottom. In this case, I accomplished that with cheap plastic practice golf balls. Uh, I like the fact that they're perforated and hollow so that they don't take up much volume at all in that space. They're strong enough, I think, to support the weight of the compost. There are probably a hundred different ways that you could come up with to suspend the filter medium off the bottom. But this will be the area where the liquid uh, runoff from the food waste will uh, collect and then you can drain it off at your convenience. I have made, I hope, a, a waterproof, uh, watertight seal here between this PVC fitting, which has a, an adapter for vinyl tube. And I'm just using half inch vinyl tube, I think, because it'll be well filtered, I think that'll be fine. And some standard plumbing fitting so that when, uh, when I notice that there seems to be a lot of liquid, you could, you could open this end and hold the tube up against the bucket and you'll be able to judge then where the level of the liquid is on the inside and then just drain it off into whatever container you want to use to either dispose of the liquid or use it as fertilizer, which I personally don't do. I have heard reports that the uh, liquid given off through this process can make a good fertilizer, but I've also heard claims that that doesn't work, and personally I can't really say either way. I don't value the liquid personally, and I, and I have never worked with it, but uh, it, it could have some value, uh, and, and certainly if it does, that's something to look into, but it's nothing that I've tested at this point. The other uh, aspect of this that I want to touch on is, is how we contain the larva. As I mentioned with the harvest uh, container over here, the larva can, in the presence of condensation, crawl up vertical surface. If it's dry, they can't, but in this bucket, I, I assume that many times, uh, you know, there's going to be conditions of high humidity or at least high humidity inside the bucket or cooling temperatures at night that will form condensation. Suffice it to say, it's going to be a fairly common event that larva will scale the walls of the bucket. That's fine as long as they can't get out the vent holes. I mean, it's not a tragedy if they do, but I would rather be able to control them and, and remove them if I want to. Um, and depending on your situation, you might have someone that, uh, that lives where this is being operated that would rather not see the larva escaping. Either way, um, this unit is designed to contain them, and it, that's accomplished very, very effectively just using a strip of Velcro. I, I use the hook material, and what that does very simply is it breaks the surface tension that the larva has with the plastic on the way up, and when they reach these fine, stiff hairs of the Velcro, it, uh, it breaks that surface tension, and it uh, interrupts what was allowing them to stick to the bucket, and they fall right back down. Or, into the compost. So it's, it's very, very effective. Uh, I recommend putting some expansion gaps because the Velcro does expand and contract at a different rate than the bucket sometimes. But, uh, but again, this is a very effective way to uh, contain the larva. The uh, last thing I want to touch on is the cardboard that I have on the fitting here. That actually is an optional thing, but I think it's, I think it's a, a good 
method of encouraging the black soldier flight females to lay more eggs than they otherwise might. If they entered the unit, which they will do through the vent holes, um, they'll follow the scent of the food that's in here and they will enter through the vent holes. Under, if there was no cardboard substrate like this, I have seen them before scatter eggs around the surface. And the eggs are tiny, you can't see them, especially on a white background because they're very light colored. Uh, and my assumption is that they would not lay all five to nine hundred eggs uh, in that fashion in one location. That if, if they weren't protected, that they would move on to more uh, uh, food sources for their larvae and, and spread their eggs over a wider area. Since we want them to lay all of their eggs in the unit, the cardboard works great for that. They're very attracted to the voids in the cardboard to lay their eggs because it's protected. So if the female comes in this hole or when, the first thing she'll see is an ideal egg laying site. And so at that point she will insert her abdomen into the void and deposit what I believe would be most or all of her eggs. I've done counts before on eggs deposited in cardboard and a conservative estimate on, on the ones I've tested are around 400 uh, eggs are deposited in the void. So estimates range from five to 900. So I think that uh, if we capture four or 500 eggs in the void of the cardboard, we've accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. This is simply a strip of cardboard rubber band to the reducer bushing that holds this in place. One advantage to doing this, there's a few actually, as the voids fill up with empty egg casings, you can trade it for a new one, which is great. Uh, I would recommend just putting this into the compost and letting it be, be shredded slowly uh, as the larvae eat, consume the waste, they'll kind of churn through and tear up the cardboard. They don't eat cardboard, but, but it will eventually disappear. That way, if there are any eggs in there that are unhatched, you don't lose them from the system. On the other hand, you could take uh, the cardboard with uh, visible eggs and use it to seed another bucket or another composter, get them to a friend or start another one yourself. So that's very convenient. It also is a good way to judge how much reproduction you're getting in your unit. It takes several weeks before the larvae get big enough to see, but it, it's very obvious when eggs have been laid in the void because it fills the opening with a, a very light tan colored uh, cluster of eggs. So it's very simple to look at the bottom of the unit and know that you've had two or three or four females enter the bucket and lay eggs. You'll rarely see the adults on the outside of the bucket I expect, you know, it, I, I'm surprised when I see more than three or four at a time. You rarely see houseflies because they're repelled by the presence of a black soldier fly colony, which works to our advantage because you don't have to deal with a properly balanced colony with a bunch of houseflies or other pest flies. Um, but it is a little bit, uh, you know, it's a matter of luck sometimes to even see one of the adults. Sometimes you'll see two or three around the bucket, but it's not uncommon to not see, to, you know, for there to be no visible adults because they just live such a short time they'll come there lay their eggs and they're gone so if you don't see them at the moment they're there laying then you won't know that you're getting reproduction so that's one benefit to having the cardboard they may also lay eggs somewhere in the velcro here I'm not sure but we'll see but that's fine too well if you want to as I said to get more specific instructions there's a page on the blog blacksoldierflyblog.com I hope that this inexpensive do-it-yourself unit will help encourage people to try their hand at working with black soldier flies who might not have otherwise tried. Uh, I think it's going to be very efficient and I'll make more videos as uh, we're just now entering the, the uh, black soldier fly season where I live so I'm going to start this bucket and make some more videos to show my progress. Again I hope that you will leave some comments on the page at my blog if you have any questions or suggestions, and uh, thank you for your time.